What is up, DFS family? Welcome back to the newly branded Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. I'm your co host, Pat Mikowski. You can find me on Twitter at PattyMac33. Your host, Mr. David Eddy, who you can find on Twitter at Corporal Eddy, has handed me the keys of the cars this week as he is a bit under the weather, but will still be dropping some knowledge for you, albeit in a limited capacity. Say hi, David. Hi, David. <laughs> uh, so before we get started, please do us a quick favor and hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, swing over to fantasysixpack.net to check out more great content. Just a reminder to you faithful listeners and some of you newbies, we're talking about DraftKings, the main slate, and MME tournaments, mass multi-entry. Now, before we get started, since Dave is typically the one doing most of the talking and I have the floor, I want to take a second to brag a little bit about my week last week. I had a doozy. I put in 20 lineups. Those 20 lineups, I spread them across a couple tournaments. Did the $1 buy-in, 250 k first down, 20 entry max. Did a 25 cent quarter jukebox 20 entry max. Did a 25 cent fantasy millionaire super satellite, which paid out 200 tickets. $43 invested, cashed out at over 920 bucks. Had five $20 entry tickets into the $20 millionaire uh, tournament, which you can bank all the way through the whole season and use them all up at once. I had two rosters that finished in the top 25 out of almost 300,000 contestants. The big four, Cousins, Adams, Thielen, Goddard. We talk about stacking people. You got to start looking at stacking people. That third lineup, same four guys. All three of those lineups, people, over 216 points. Absolutely killed it. Had a lot of fun. What a hit for another 450 bucks that they wouldn't have called that stupid touchdown back on Camara with 10 seconds to go in the game. So, enough about me, Dave. Let's talk about you. Hey, Who's Pat. Pat, I, I, have, I, have, I have a quick question for you, Pat. Yeah. You said that one of those, um, the, those contests, one of them was a quarter entry, right? Yeah. I, I think you should have taken one of those quarters. And so you could have called your mom with it because nobody cares about your winnings, Patrick. I disagree, David. I'm you just and kidding. I, uh, <laughs> you and I were pretty excited about that week last week. I don't recall. Yeah, we went back uh, back and forth <clears throat> quite a bit Sunday prior to prior to the games kicking off and uh, came up with some strategy. So yeah, full full talk. disclosure, I uh, I didn't even break even. I got I lost about. 20% of what I wagered. So I, nothing, none of my lamps were terrible, but I didn't hit anything big. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> you know, typically I don't hit anything that big either. I think that's probably the second best day I've ever had. Uh, not once in a lifetime thing, but we're looking to do it again this week. So let's get started. And uh, who do you got with your gospel? Well, I, you know, don't really like paying up at quarterback. I think we've talked about this before. Um, you know, there are some exceptions for, you know, Lamar Jackson or, you know, somebody up at the top, of, you know, with a really great matchup. But um, I'm not paying up at quarterback for the most part this week. Um, I'm probably going to pay up for some DAC just because I'm going to talk about that matchup a lot today and, and how much I like it. But um, Kyler Murray is, I think, going to be – my highest owned quarterback. Now, granted, because I like that, you know, that Cowgirls and Falcons game so much, I'm going to have a lot of Dak and a lot of Matt Ryan, but um, Kyler Murray is going to be another guy I'm going to have probably the most of. So he comes in as a 14th, 14th most expensive quarterback on the slate. And I think he's in a great position this week against that Washington defense. So, I mean, listen, Washington does have an incredible front seven. Uh, no question about that. So, one thing that you would normally worry about with you know a team going against them would be you know the pressure that they're going to get. But I think that might actually work out into our advantage for DFS purposes 
um, because I could see that getting Murray out of the pocket and getting some of those kind of freebie ground yards. So I think that, you know, it gives you a great opportunity to stack him with Hopkins, who absolutely murdered it last week. What do you have, like 14 catches for 150 yards or something? I don't yeah. see, I don't see, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that's going to be a repeat, but I also don't see Washington's secondary necessarily, you know, shutting him down. And then I, I like McLaurin as well. So you can go ahead and, you know, run Murray with Hopkins and then throw it back with um, McLaurin. So that's kind of going to be my, my, my core play for the week. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think Murray is uh, set up nicely uh, to have a good game as well. And we're going to talk more about that Falcons and Cowgirls game a little bit later on. So uh, for my gospel this week, I'm going Derrick Henry. 7900 bucks against the Jags. Uh, absolute no-brainer here. One of the top five running backs in the game going against a Jaguars defense that gave up over 31 fantasy points a game in 2019 to opposing running backs and picked up right where they left off in week one against a three-headed monster in Indy. Colts running backs combined for over 42 points. Henry, 36 carries, 203 yards, three touchdowns last year against the Jags in only two games. El Tractorito is going to cover enough ground in this one to plow two cornfields. Huge game, Derrick Henry against the Jags. How about your devil, David? Who's your devil this week? Well, I tell you, my son's going to kill me um, because this is one of his favorite players. He's got about four or five guys that he absolutely loves um, just from playing playing Madden. Uh, and uh, one of his favorites is Saquon Barkley. And I got to tell you, unless Saquon has a huge day in the passing game, which granted is possible, uh, I think he's going to struggle against the Bears. I mean, Chicago, as we know, has a pretty solid D. Uh, and I just I don't see Barkley having a big day on the ground, and there's a lot of competition in that offense for catches. Now he's coming in as the second highest priced running back this week, and I I honestly just don't see, you know I don't see a logical way that Barkley scores enough points this week uh, to make his value worthwhile. So Saquon Barkley, I'm sorry, Braden, hard pass for me this week. Yeah, I, I kind of tend to agree with you on this one too, Dave. You know, even though AP uh, did some work last week on that Bears D, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna probably shy away from Barkley. Same reason, just because of the price tag. Uh, I think that that's a pretty solid call. For me, I'm going back to a team that's going to play the Lions. I got Aaron Jones, 7100 bucks, running back for the Fudge Packers. And, you know, that's right. I, I'm back in it. Benching a running back that's facing the Detroit Lions. It's crazy. I get it. But through 41 career games in the NFL, Jones has averaged over five yards of carry, over eight yards of catch, scored a total of 33 touchdowns in 41 games. That's pretty proficient. But against the Lions, carried it for 48 times, 199 yards, which is only a little over four yards of carry. 10 catches for 21 yards. You do the math. Two yards of catch. Zero. Nada. Zip. Zilch. No touchdowns. None. He cannot find the end zone against the Lions for some reason. I'm totally good with it. I'm going to have Jones riding the pine this weekend while I'm tipping back some ice cold Bud Lights and watching my Lions roll into Lambeau Field and steal another one from the Fudge Packers. Boy, Pat, you're... Um... <laughs> your optimism brightens my day my friend well good i'm glad i can put a smile on your face davy oh boy well that's right lions will take that away on sunday <laughs> yeah unfortunately you're probably right yeah uh your pivot who's your archangel this week dave well um as i kind of had talked about before well we both have talked about cowgirls and falcons game um pretty sure that Dak Prescott is going to be the highest owned quarterback this week. And I actually think that I like Matt Ryan just a little bit more. So $6,600, uh, he's going against the Cowgirls. Um, so I think kind of what better pivot than to slide from Dak to Ryan. Now Ryan's probably going to be, I don't know, what, third, fourth, fifth highest owned quarterback. But, you know, I'm going to save a few hundred bucks. 
I can still, you know, pair Ryan with either Ridley or Julio. Kind of take your pick. Probably going to mix them up both together, of course. Um, if you want to get a little sneaky, you could stack him with Hayden Hurst as well. And then you've got the beautiful run back with either Amari or Gallup. Um, you know, if you think it's going to be a close, high scoring game. Uh, another beauty of stacking uh, with the Falcons and Matt Ryan this week is that if you think that the Cowgirls are going to get out to a huge lead and play from ahead all game, you can actually correlate that Falcon stack with Zeke as opposed to one of those receivers. I think that is actually pretty sneaky, and I think that could definitely get you some some you know a little bit of differential, a little bit of leverage in that matchup. But needless to say, I'm going to be heavy on this stack. I'm going to be creative with the different ways that I can stack it as well. This is the game this week that is going to win or lose me the money. Yeah, and, you know, three three in a row this week, Dave. I, I'm totally with you on the Atlanta stack. Uh, there is plenty to go around in the ATL, um, as we saw last weekend. Um, you know, and, and I really dig the, the sneaky little Zeke play, too, because I think he's going to have a pretty solid game. And my Archangel, I'm staying right there, buddy. I got Michael Gallup. 5600 bucks. You know, if you look at 2019, he actually averaged more targets than Cooper. Not to mention, I feel like Cooper's going to be drawing a ton of attention, not only from Atlanta's defense, uh, but at his 6300 price tag, which I think is really, really fair for him um, in a pretty appealing matchup. And that's just why I like Gallup even more. For me, and, and it's apparent last year, Cooper's a boom or a bust kind of guy. I've just got a weird feeling um, that he's just going to be kind of almost non-existent. You know, one of those three catch or four catch games for 30 or 40 yards. Um, I'm just kind of going with my gut on this one. As we know, I got quite the gut for 700 bucks less, man. I like Gallup. I feel like he's give, gives me a little bit better opportunity. Uh They gave up over 38 points to Seahawks wideouts last week. Uh, I'm just, I'm going Gallup. Uh, That's what I got. So uh, why why don't we stay right there and why don't you share uh, your heresy pick with us, Dave? Yeah, so, I mean, literally, can't get enough of that game. Um, It's either going to make or break me, I think, and... You know, you've got, like I said, Julio and Ridley, Amari, Gallup. Hell, you can even, you know, correlate Zeke into that, like I said. It's not that Zeke is obviously a a unique or a sneaky play, but I think it's very sneaky when you can slip a running back, um, you know, into that stack. Uh, that, That definitely gives you a lot of differential. But, you know, another guy that I think... I'm going to be, well, I don't think, I know I'm going to be over the field in, is going to be C.D. Lamb. So C.D. Lamb comes in $4,400 this week. So obviously, you know, there's a savings there. But with Jarwin going down, there's more targets for everybody. But, you know, that that really then gives a boost to C.D. Lamb. So I don't necessarily think by any means that it's a sneaky pick. I'm not going to be the only person um, that's in on it. But slipping in a little bit of lamb is going to be, like I said, a good way to give you leverage against those more confident plays. So so this is where in my 20 maxes, if I've got, I'll probably have five, um, five shares of Dak Prescott. So I'm going to go two of those with Amari, probably going to go two of those with Gallup, and then one of those is going to be with CD Lamb. And then at some point with, you know, a Murray stack, let's say I'm going to have a secondary stack where I'm going to put, you know, C.D. Lamb in there and I'm going to match him with Ridley, let's say. So I'm going to get my share of Lamb, even if it's not with a direct stack with Dak. And I love when I rhyme unintentionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good stuff, Dave. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, for, for my heresy pick, I'm going to go opposite of your gospel. Dwayne Haskins Jr., fifty one hundred bucks. That Washington football team that we've been talking about. For me, a quarterback with a fifty one hundred dollar price tag that you know is going to throw the ball thirty times against the worst passing defense in the NFL last year. 
yeah, please, I'm in. This is an easy 4X on the money for me, in my opinion. With all the other juicy matchups at QB this week, uh, I think this one is going to kind of fly under the radar a little bit for the price tag. I think we're going to see the Skins tomahawking their way through Arizona in a shootout between these two second-year quarterbacks. Uh, speaking of shootouts between quarterbacks, how about a Hail Mary, Dave? Who's your Hail Mary this week? Well, I, this is a guy, I mean, that I think I, I typically like more than most. I actually played him a, a little bit last week, but um, Chris Herndon, tight end, Jets, uh, comes in at $3,400. Uh, if you go ahead and you take a look through the tight end pricing, you're going to have to scroll down a ways to find Chris Herndon. Uh, he comes in as the 30 most expensive tight end. Now, unlike the quarterback position, uh, where, like I said, you can you know always find you know low to mid range quarterback with upside, tight end position traditionally, recently at least, uh, has been a position that I've had to been you know been paying up at because uh, it's not a very deep position for DFS. Like I said, Herdin is a guy that I love, and he's got a tough matchup against 49ers defense. But I think his price makes his upside just astronomical. Now, it's unlikely that Herndon will break the slate, um, but he does have the talent level to do so. And I don't know why, and I talk about this a lot with Joe on our last call podcast, uh, where we go ahead and you know review and, and recap the games um, Sunday night, but... You know, the, the Jets is a team that I've always liked a little bit more than everyone else. I, I do like Sam Darno. Um, I could, I definitely see the Jets get behind in that game. And there's not a lot of great targets um, for the Jets. And Herndon, when healthy, is one of the better tight ends in the league. So it is very possible that he could have a, a pretty nice week. And he's going to be cheap. And nobody's going to play him. But me, I will be playing Chris Herndon. He'll probably be my highest owned tight end. And he is a Hail Mary this week, I would say. Yeah, that's that's certainly the case. Uh, you know, I'm going to stick in the same position for my Hail Mary. I, I got Jack Doyle, 3600 bucks. You know, he, he's just a hair above Herndon. Uh, it is against the Vikings, though, in extremely stingy defense against tight ends. Uh, he's got a tough task, but the one thing that we do know is that old man Rivers has a soft spot for tight ends. He really likes to look at them as they run their routes down the field. It's not going to take Phillip long to realize that Doyle is the tight end that he's been searching for. And for the price tag, a tight end one, 3600 bucks with a quarterback that's used to throwing to big athletic tight ends. Oh, Doyle rules. He's going to have a good game this week if he plays, if for some reason he doesn't with that ankle or knee injury he sustained last week. Maybe take a look at sliding a little Mo Ali Cox, his backup for 3,100 in his place. You know, I got to say, Pat, I, I've i always thought of you as someone that kind of reminds me of Philip Rivers because you're both old, <laughs> you're both white, you're slow, and you have a bad arm. You got a rocket for an arm too. Now, now that I now that you mentioned how much he likes tight ends, I you are Philip Rivers. All right. That that's you're Philip Rivers. That's fine. He has a lot of money. Yes, he does, and a lot of children. I'm sure his, I'm sure his wife <laughs> is hot. I think he has eight kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, the man can get the job done. So <laughs> all those tight ends he sees all day, he that, goes home and takes care of business. Yeah. He has to. He's got to. So, well, I, Dave, I really appreciate you, you giving me the keys to the car today. I hope that you're feeling better, man. Uh, you got any last words parting before we get out of here for the night? My good friend, Patrick, you did a fantastic job. Um, you had me laughing the whole time. You, you, you did a great job, my friend. I appreciate you taking those keys and you didn't wreck the car but you washed it and, you, and you're bringing it back better than you found it my friend thank you i'll put a full tank of gas in it too buddy oh man all right <laughs> all right folks that's that's it for us uh good luck this weekend david rest up and we will talk soon